our favourite sites, yes. mudlarking sites, but today we're here to look for something very specific. Very, yeah. mm -hmm. Because we're here to look for... Broken glass! glass. <laughs> Just broken glass! <laughs> Because we have a project, you might have seen some posts on our Instagram yeah. that will give you a hint. Um, but we oh, are so excited. We're so <laughs> excited. It's been such fun making those little beads. And um, now we've come back um, and we know a little bit more about the glass and, and how to use it and which glass works. Um, so we know what for... we're looking for. And before we left a lot of glass behind because mm. we were like, well, what can we use sharp bits of glass yeah. for? Yeah, even though they were very pretty, mm. we didn't know what yeah. to do with them, so... But now we've got a purpose for uh -huh. making beads. And it's so much fun, I can't wait to show you guys as well. So let's go and get some glass. Yeah. <laughs> this is such an exciting project. I've just found my first contender. Yeah, so here is a piece of milk glass which we have not tried before. So yes, definitely taking this. Because I'm sure that will work. Well, it might not. <laughs> but that's what we're here for, to find out which glass works and which doesn't. And I see a bit of cobalt there, which has worked very well for us so far. So we'll be taking the cobalt. Okay, here's a nice piece of green. Looks like it could be off a cod bottle. But that's a lovely colour. This piece of amber brown might come out nice. Take that. Oh look! Talking about beads. There's a beautiful tiny little seed bead. It's like a little orange one. Oh! I'm losing it. If we find the right colour, maybe we can try and recreate some of the bees we've already found. But I just saw this. Oh, is it a hole? Oh my gosh, this hole! Oh, it's got one tiny, tiny little chip out of it. Oh wow, look at that! Is that sponge wear? I think it is! You see that? Spongeware! It's an incomplete little spongeware dish! Oh my gosh! I don't know how I didn't, we didn't see this last time. It's just got the tiniest little chip there that we can quite easily fix. The rest of it's perfect. Oh, I think Mum's going to love that as well. We'd definitely put that on display in our house with some sea glass in it or something. Or maybe we can keep all our beads in it. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy with that. I didn't expect it. A little spongeware dish. It could be Victorian. Probably is. We'll turn the century. Pink. Although pink doesn't seem to work very well in the beads. It burns very easily, but I'll take it anyway. You never know. We might master it. There's some nice, um, sort of turquoisey glass here and it's solid turquoise all the, way, all the way through sometimes it's just coated on the outside and the, ins the, the core of it is clear but this is solid color um, I've tried making some beads with this color and they never come out successfully they always seem to burn so we're just going to keep trying different pieces of glass until we find some that works swans are having a nap or are they geese? Oh, I think they're geese. Oh, that's like emerald, proper emerald green. If it's not focusing. Yeah, that was probably some kind of funky vase. Oh, cool. That was going to be perfect because um, in our experiment so far, we found that green works quite well. I think I might take that for the glass. <laughs> I wonder if we can make beads out of that, an old battery casing. A nice piece of dark green here. Barrow in fur, that would have said barrow in furnace. 
This looks like a nice green. Oh yeah, poison bottle green. Lovely. I almost ignored this because I thought it was a berry. But I think it's a bead. Wow. Here we are looking for glass to make these. And I find this beautiful red bead. It looks like a berry. Wow. It's lovely. Yes, these are all coming home, these pieces, these coloured pieces. Can't wait to use them. Little tiny bit of poison bottle blue here, but it's enough to make a bead. Oh, this looks interesting. Oh, look at this. It's glass. Look at the colours in that. Sort of on the surface, but that might make an interesting bead. Definitely. Give that a try. See it hiding. Can't hide from me. Oh, this is really similar to the, to the colour I found just before as well. It's yellow on the inside, clear, you can just see it there, and then there's colours inside. That's a bit big, <laughs> I'm running out of room. Maybe if I break it. Well, that didn't work very well, did it? Hello, goose. Cheeky goose. That's a great candidate for trying us beads. Oh, this is what we want. Look at that. Fantastic. What's this? Another bead. Oh, this is a strange one. It's sort of cone shaped. It's meant to be like that, sort of cone shaped. Oh, that's interesting. A sort of opalescent pink. Not found one like that before. This time it is a berry. <laughs> Some milk glass here that I would like to try. I'd like to try and melt. I found a Milk of Magnesia bottle and that, it's all melted, funny shape, but that will make nice beads and I can call them Magnesia beads. A little bit of pink there. Hello. Hello. Okay, so that was our day looking for glass to use in our bead making. We actually found beads as well. So. Yeah, I think we were pretty successful because we are laden. We're it's laden so heavy, I can hardly walk. We've got There's to get so back much. to the car. Look at this orange one. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, so yeah, let's get back home and make some beads.
Okay, so here is some of our lovely glass that we found. Yep. And there's all sorts here. There's art glass like this piece here. And there's bits of cod bottles. Some lovely pinks. And greens. There's some nice like variations of greens, yeah. isn't there? I love the different greens. But they're all nice and clean and shiny and sparkly now. And we have smashed um, a lot of the bigger pieces up into like smaller, more manageable chunks that we can melt down for our beads so yeah let's let's go upstairs let's try it and try it out We're so excited i know it's so exciting making our own beads it's incredible i can't believe it i know really. isn't it but yeah let's go and do it because i can't wait any longer <laughs> okay okay so here we are everything's at our workbench <laughs> yeah everything's set up we've got Set up for yeah. melting glass. We've got a blowtorch, a big powerful one. Yeah, this is the one, that we already have this, it's the one that I use for my casting. So um, it's map, a map gas torch, so it's it's also perfect for lamp work as well, I yeah. think. Yeah. So. so we're lucky to have already had yeah. that. So. Um, and we're using the lovely... That lovely dish we found. Early 19th century spongeware dish that Alex found on the foreshore. And it is not cracked, it's got a chip there. But we're going to try and fill that in with milliputs. Yeah. And then it's beautiful. I, I absolutely love it. And it's and got it's sand in it and it's holding our mandrels, which we will be making the beads on. So basically with the, the mandrels are like stainless steel and they come in different sizes, different gauges. And here's Here's them here. And they have um, to be dipped into this. Which is a, it's called bead release. It's basically like it's slip. Like slips like clay slip. It's like clay, it? yeah. It's basically exactly the same as clay slip. And you mix it up, shake it up, and you literally just get the mandrel. Just dip it in and pull it out. And it has, it says on the bottle it has to be the consistency of like a thick milkshake. But that's it. And then we've put it, We've put the sand in our dish so we can just stick them in there to dry. Um, and we've pre-dipped all of these ones. And they have to be dry before you can yeah, use them. Yeah, they have them. to be completely dry. But this isn't dry. a tu tutorial, so no. don't... We're just saying what we've done if so If you far. want to learn how to do something... You should probably get classes. <laughs> yeah. Not like us, who yeah, just... Yeah, don't copy us. ...stumble our way through the dark. We've got a fireboard, um, a solid um, stone marble here, and metal work surfaces and we've got a fire blanket for putting the beads in to cool slowly otherwise they crack if they don't cool slowly and, and safety glasses safety glasses you should have um i think sodium flare protection glasses but because we haven't been doing this very long um we don't really need them because we don't really spend a lot of time making but beads but anyway, for now these will do anyway it's not that bright yeah, it's like so exciting <laughs> we're gonna make beads so let's get started. Let's do let's it. Let's make some antique, modern <laughs> beads. So we see, we love finding beads, and so it's so cool to make them. Okay, so we're gonna pick what glass we're gonna use, and then who's gonna stop us? You might as well. You're in the seat. Okay. You need to put your seat up, and we'll have to readjust yeah. the cameras. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's do it. Okay, so I think I'm gonna try one of the multicolored pieces. Normally when people are doing lamp work they use glass rods so they can hold the rod directly um, because it's long enough to keep their fingers away from the flame but these are too short so I'm just going to use these. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I need to up really slowly by dipping it in and out of the flame. And if there's two of us, we can remind each other what to do. bit lopsided but I hope it works out but I think I'm gonna try another glass now
Next one. Oh, that, oh, that, the first bead looks really good. Look. I can't look at it because I'm concentrating. But it looks good. That blue actually is very nice to work with. I've tried it before. Blues are generally work quite well, don't they? Hold the long bit like there. Horizontally, you should hold it horizontally yeah. across the flame. And then use the flame um, to cut the glass. That looks good, doesn't it? It's, it's great. It's I keep gone. It. It's gone bead shaped. Pull it out of the flame. A bit. So we're hoping the multi-coloured one will make a nice swirl inside. It looks so pretty, the, the glass in the flame. This one's melting really quickly. Lovely, that, one, that last one I did. The last time this glass was melted was probably over a hundred years ago. That's melting really nicely, isn't it? Yeah, and it's shiny as well, you can tell. It's very stressful on your arms. <laughs> that 
down now. Are you literally watching us learn? Yeah. Which is probably very agonizing to watch. Especially if you've done lamp work before. I think you learn by failing, and we've done quite a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> got to go in the kiln later to be um, annealed. annealed. If they're not annealed then they'll be very weak beads because um, as they're cooling different parts of the bead are cooling at different temperatures which creates a lot of stress within the bead. of all their hard work. Yeah. Um, some successes and some not so successful. <laughs> it is the next day and yesterday we made a lot of beads off camera. <laughs> we made loads of them. We um, ran out of gas actually. <laughs> we did, we actually ran out of gas and um, yeah we suppose you didn't want to watch us making beads for hours so we made a lot of them off camera. But we haven't had a proper look no. in the Just glimpses blanket. because we couldn't take the blanket off for long um, while they were cooling yeah, down. Yeah, if they don't cool slow, then they just crack and yeah. So we're going to have a look at them um, right now. Oh, wow. wow. Look at them in the look sunshine. At the look, at the, look at the pink. Oh, oh. so pretty. Okay, oh. right. You can't probably see them very well from up there. So we'll bring you down here. We'll have a closer look at them. Absolutely amazing. Wow. I can't believe we actually made those. So we're gonna... We have to take them off the mandrels now um, and put them in the kiln to anneal them, which is another scary step because yeah. with them all being different types of glass, some of them might not last, like, survive the kiln, so we're a bit worried. But it's got to be done. We've not put, we've not tried annealing any beads yet, so it might go horribly wrong. <laughs> they might all just shatter or something, I don't know. But, so basically you just twist them off the end. It's not that easy. <laughs> now some of them would get quite stuck. Yeah, some of them you need to get the pliers on the end of the thing and then twist it. Thank you. 
<laughs> the sun is in the it's really wrong annoying. position right now. But we did it, look. Well, we got them off the mandrel. Well, we got them off the mandrel. They've still got to be annealed yet, so they're not... off now. They're not out of the woods yet. Yeah, so but... now the very last stage is annealing. So keep your fingers crossed. Yes. Oh, <laughs> keep everything wish them crossed. well. Wish them well. Next time them... you see them, they'll be complete, clean beads. Isn't it incredible? It's amazing. I oh can't believe. God. Look. Well, I'm not going to get excited yet. Don't count your yeah. beads before they're annealed. Don't count. Okay, so we've got our kiln here. And this is a, a just a little kiln that uh, mum got me for Christmas, like, I don't know, like three years ago, maybe? Yeah. Maybe three years so ago. So it has seen quite a bit of use since then. And over here we've washed our beads, given them a bit of a wash, and they look amazing. Dry them in the sun. Yeah, drying in the sunshine. Hopefully the sun doesn't crack them with the heat. But they look all right. They look fine. Okay, so we're going to put them on this bit of fire blanket. <laughs> Get a hold of it. And then we've cut it to the right size and then put them in the kiln and then slowly heat them up to anneal them. So it is the next day and this is our second batch. We've already taken the first batch out, but these have been cooling overnight and they are at room temperature, or at least I don't think it's 28 degrees in the room exactly. It's probably colder than that, <laughs> but it doesn't seem to want to drop lower than 28 degrees. So I'm going to take them out now. And it's taken about half the day yesterday and all of the night tonight to anneal these properly. Are the beads we made? Here they are. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! Look I at can't beads. believe we made beads. I just can't. <laughs> Look how many we made. How many other? There's like... about 162. Wow. Not counting the ones that failed. Here's some of the fails. Yeah, some of them cracked, and yeah, they just didn't these, make it. Um, we could use some of them for cabochons. The cabochons, yeah. They haven't yeah. been annealed though yet, have they? Yeah. No. But so. um. Yeah, uh, so we made uh, most of them off camera because it's basically just the same thing. Same process just, over and over. Yeah, yeah. but um, I think we got better at it, didn't we? We def definitely got better and better at it. Um, mo the first batches we made, they aren't here, but the beads were just like grey and yeah, yeah. a horrible like burgundy colour um, because we just burnt the glass yeah. at too high. Actually, there's a bit here. You can see it goes black. Yeah, can you see how it's just gone black? We melted this at far too high a temperature, so the beads were this horrible black colour. But anyway, we did get better. And it's a learning process, isn't it? It was. It was a huge learning curve. But so um, after, yeah, actually, after, after we took them out of the kiln, I should say, um, it we spent well, I spent ages, like a few hours, cleaning the inside of every bead Look because. The bead release from the mandrel um, gets stuck inside, so I had to use a reamer. Yeah. But I just used a diamond file to get the bead release out. The Same thing, really. Out, yeah. Fair. But anyway, 
Look at them. We've been playing with them, holding them and feeling them and oh, holding up them to the light and showing everybody. And That's my favourite. The teal. What, that blue one, yeah. Teal blue. That's gorgeous. So I'm going to take some more pictures of these close up <coughs> and show them at the end and get my macro lens on. Okay, you can see um, these are the sorts of bits of glass we've been using to make um, the beads. Yeah. So we can show you which beads were made with which kinds of glass. So these beads are, this is a bit of disinfectant bottle. <laughs> not and sure what that is. Not sure what that bottle is. But the turquoise, oh, these beads here, these absolutely amazing uh, multicolored blue ones are made with Mostly these. Mostly these. These pieces, because they've got a lot of blue colors in. And, oh, the red is, um, we haven't got any here, but it's a piece of old tail light of a car, of like a vintage car, like isn't it? a vintage it? car tail light, yeah. So it's tail light red. Tail light red. Uh, oh, turquoise, which didn't work at first for ages because the torch was too high a temperature, but I finally got the hang of it and I made some. And they're, they're beautiful. I made some of that very own Padre beads. These original beads here, they're called Padre beads and they're. Blue um, ones, yeah. Yeah, these blue turquoise ones and they date from around the 19th to the very early 20th century and they were made in either venice or china as trade beads um they were traded in africa and america, america with, with the native americans because obviously the turquoise color yeah, is sacred popular. to the native american peoples and you can see how many we find we find loads of them for some reason yeah obviously very popular bead and these ones here i think are my favourite. Yeah. Because these are mostly cod bottle, <laughs> cod bottle green. Cod bottle. You can see a bit of the broken cod yeah, bottle. Yeah, and there's a little chunk that we've actually can see. It's, it's actually melted. a beautiful colour. It, it, it's lovely in beads. It is. So that's those ones. It's a lovely pale greeny colour. These ones are more of the art glass. Yeah, so these are more of the yellow toned art glasses here. And they've come out really nicely as well. Got some red colours in there. And we've got some more transparent blue. These ones we burnt at first, and some of them are a, a little bit burnt because you can see bits of, um, like, a muddy. Yeah. Uh, it's quite nice color. though. It makes. Yeah, it swirls, does. But it? that is these, and they're they're Ooh. just like a, a dish. Transparent bits of glass. They, I think they were some kind of art glass dish. And these are lovely pink ones. Oh yes, the, I think this is a similar kind of dish as well. Yeah, but yeah. But it's the, the most beautiful pale pink colour, isn't it? Like a baby pink. It's like I love salmon -y, salmon -y Yeah, pink. I love the way they've come out. It's a beautiful colour. And then these lovely green the ones. Greenies, which go actually really nicely. There's with so the many pink. different shades of green. There's um, yeah, that's that green. That was some kind of dish as well, some kind of bowl. That's so beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. And what are these ones? They're sort of a oh, pinky. So this is a bit weird because these. Oh yes, <laughs> it wasn't pink to start with. No, um, these are made out of orange glass, and it's the sort orange, of orange and clear, isn't it? Yeah, orange and clear, and then they went pink. So they turned to these like beautiful swirly pink beads, which is well, most of them are, are made out of this. But yeah, strange alchemy going on there. And then we have the white ones. White ones. Some of them came out a bit pinky. Yeah, you it can just see... shows the different kinds of glass. You can see the different glass here. This was white, but you can see how it's gone pink. And then the really white ones. Were you this, made um, you made those that one the, the white ones. This glass came out really nice and white. Yeah, so. you can see the lovely little white beads there, amongst the pinky ones. Um, orange. Okay, these not many orange. There's not many oranges, but these oranges actually did come out because we have two different kinds of orange glass. There's like a um, a darker one and a lighter one. The lighter one worked, but it was the darker one that turned pink, which is a bit weird. And more green. More green. There's actually different kinds of green in here, including poison bottle green, which is from this bigger shard here. So well, that's that mixed in there. And then the blues, which include poison bottle blue. Poison bottle blue. Which and is some other cobalt. blues. And yeah, there's some like teal blues. And, I love those um, teal blue ones. Like light light blues. There's all kinds of blues that we find. That's, that's one of them that we've used since it's melted there. 
So yeah, it's been it's been great fun um, experimenting. Um, it's been to see amazing. how these would come out <laughs> as beads, and I don't know. I think we've been quite successful. I really. think we I'm have. happy with them anyway. I think you, my, Alex? my our technique might not be quite there yet because we are no. beginners, but. I think you But I don't think anyone's attempted succeeded. this before. No, it's it's yeah, it's uh it's very temperamental the old glass, isn't it? Cuz it's not quite the same kind of glass that and we have now. I thought nowadays. later maybe we should try attaching some um ro uh, glass rods to the glass. Yeah, um, so we can hold it with to make it handling it much easier. But you know, there we are. There are Oh, how many beads, beads? are there as well? There's about 162. Oh, this is crazy. This is not including the fails. No. We did. We had a lot of failures um, that just went a horrid brownish colour, and some of them cracked um, as well during the process. But yeah, that's it. There they are. Okay, that's it for this week, and we hope you've enjoyed our little adventures into yeah, bead making. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, we have, <laughs> and we've surprised ourselves. So. <laughs> Um, and so we'd like to say a big thank you to all of our subscribers and everyone who takes the time and trouble to comment. Yeah, all of our patrons. We could not do this without all of our patron no. support. So thank you very much to those people. And all of the people who have very, very kindly bought us things from our Amazon wish list. Including... So a book about beads. A book about beads, <laughs> which, which is, is fantastic. Which is yeah. how we It's discovered... been very helpful, this... Uh, which is how we discovered the history of the Padre yeah, beads. Yeah. So thank you very much to the, to the person who bought us that. Yeah, so. Goodbye. It's goodbye and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. Bye.